Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. Well, recently Dan 3 came out, so the usual question arises. Oh, uh, is the art and especially the coloring in this book here really a, an improvement to older editions like my old German uh, version over there? Well, spoilers, yes and no. Uh, that's one thing to discuss today. Um, but I have Vampirella stories by Richard Corbin and uh, stories he did for Marvel as well. Um, so, something unusual, I guess, because uh, probably even uh, some Richard Corbin fans uh, amongst you haven't read these stories or uh, seen them. Um, even though it's the typical Richard Corbin fair, um, but that's great, I think. Uh, the first story here, it, it's not really, these are not really Vampirella stories with Vampirella in uh, them, but uh, witch stories and stories about demonic possession and fighting the witches and black magic with fantastic coloring as always. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> creatures like only Richard Corbin can do them. And on a very few pages, uh, these are concluded stories with a um, yeah, very tropey, very cliche, if you will, but satisfying stuff. I mean, this here is maybe my favorite, favorite of the bunch here uh, in archive. Volume 5 um, of Vampirella, The Woodlick Inheritance, um, because the coloring here, the colors are insane. I mean, they're almost always insane when it comes to Corbin, but here it's so psychedelic. Um, It's about the curse that uh, rests on this family woodlick here. And this picture here, I hope it comes across as crazy as it is. I mean, look at this panel for five minutes and you don't need no drugs ever again. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm... This is just uh, outstanding stuff here. This double page here looks a bit dark, but still, it's not easy to reprint uh, Corm. Of course, look, do you see this monster here holding uh, the hubby here firm? Even for Carmen, this this coloring here is insane. Takes no prisoners. <laughs> I want this picture here as a huge painting or poster. So, I mean, uh, the fascinating thing with these Vampirella archives is uh, that all the art, almost all the art in, uh, within these books here is amazing. And uh, even the tropey, cliché uh, stories uh, have a lot of charm. And uh, you will discover artists um, like, or revisit artists like uh, Jeff Catherine Jones here. Um, and when you look at the colors, you may get the suspicion, and you're right, the color, colors are by Rich Corn. So Richard Corn colored this here, and he didn't hold back, obviously. And it's a good choice. It enhances the eerie feeling. The, this child here is a bit of these this kind of creepy kids and uh, so the coloring here is for some reason uh, chosen
The last Richard Corbin story of the bunch here is uh, from top to bottom about this uh, maze inside a cube. And when you're playing it, uh, it can happen that you will find yourself inside this cube. So it's a bit of kind of a bold premise for uh, only eight pages, but uh, one of these really good, fascinating Richard Corbin short stories, nevertheless. Then we have uh, some Marvel comics Richard Corbin did. Uh, there has to be some Punisher Max one by Richard Corbin as well, but I couldn't find it. Um, so, um, yeah, I just pulled out a banner, Hulk stories by uh, Richard Corbin and this one with this quite generic cover. I wonder why they haven't chosen this drawing by Richard Corbin instead. Uh, this is more or less a hardballed crime story. I didn't know anything about um, Luke Cage, uh, to be honest with you. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to Marvel comics, as you may know. Uh, but that didn't matter. Uh, this story, you ca can obviously understand it. Uh, having never read anything Marvel before, and it's a very hardballed satisfying uh, story this guy cage against um, different factions of mobsters and gangsters and uh, whatever whoever wants to rule the hood uh, there and he plays them all as you can guess very bloody uh, very well written by um, brian azzarello and this is true for the other book here, also written by Brian Azzarello. Banner, uh, a four-issue miniseries in these German uh, trades here, this is very slim trades. Um, there are all, um, in each of these are two issues collected. So this is the usual yeah, Jekyll and Hyde story of Banner and Hulk. And when he is the Hulk in these uh, stories here, he is beating the shit out of poor earth and killing people and um, he's opposed by this guy who wants the absolute power I see his muscles so he took uh, a bit of the Hulk treatment uh, but is nowhere uh, near as close as a Hulk who just yeah can't be killed Look at these muscles drawn by Corbin. Uh, it's a ma uh, match made in comic heaven, more or less. Uh, even though he looks a lot like some kind of uh, super baby, uh, which he is actually uh, in, in terms of brain power, which he lacks significantly, obviously. But I don't have to tell you and explain to you uh, what the Hulk and Banner is. So this is really basic uh, Hulk story um, with fantastic Corbin art, even though the colors are not by him. And you get some panels who are really, really crazy. And some panels or covers like this one who are really, really good, which are really, really good. So really like this and the, the covers here are fantastic so now to dan children of fire dan three um which is a bit peculiar and uh, i was surprised because in german these old german editions um this is uh richard corbin number nine um and uh, so it was pu uh, published after these Dan stories, which will be um, reprinted uh, by Dark Horse after the story. So the sequence is a bit changed, but I guess uh, this is the sequence that Richard Corbin had in mind with Dan. 
So, uh, and it's no problem to read this in uh, the uh, one or the other sequence because uh, the timeline is a bit, yeah, I don't want to say all over the place, but it's not so important. Beautiful book here. Uh, and like always, the question are the colors are, uh, is this new edition really an improvement? And uh, probably when you look inside this book, right from the start, you have the feeling, well, this looks good, but is it really the optimum? Is it really the best that they can do, that they could do? Uh, look at the clouds here uh, in the background. They look a bit blurry. And uh, sometimes it is with these uh, books here that you have um, the stuff uh, reprinted in real dark colors, sometimes a bit too dark. So let's do the old comparing here. Um, and uh, the picture above is from the new edition and this is the old edition from 1993. And if you look at some details, for an example, the shoulder here, that's a gray tone while here it really, I don't know if the mobile really picks it up, it's green and the light tones on the cheek are, I like them better uh, in the older version and the green here is more intense and uh, so on. And you can go the page all the way down. And overall, I think the older edition is clearer. And here, especially the last picture, you can see the problem that I have with some panels that they are printed blurry or oversaturated while uh, it's not perfect here in the old German version, but it's better, I'm, I mean. Then we change the page and on the left hand side, um, whoops, uh, it's maybe the other way around and uh, the more intense, maybe more uh, or darker uh, color scheme of the new book is a slightly, slightly better than the old version. One page that is clearly more intense and overall better uh, in the new book is this one here. Uh, if you compare it to my older book, you see especially the violet and the green. It's just, yeah, more like the stuff Richard Corbin probably had in mind when he uh, drew and colored the page here. But it's not so bad in my old version. Uh, and that this boggled a bit my mind when I saw them referring to this particular page uh, to document what uh, they had done here. And so they present here the old blurry version and the new version. But clearly here, the German version from 1993 was already much, much better than this. So they didn't have to go from there. They could choose this here and changed and tweaked it a bit uh, to get this here. But okay, they made their point there here, Mr. Fra um, Villarubia. Um, but yeah, well, lots of pages uh, since they uh, published the started publishing these books. I I wonder why they haven't scanned more of these older books. I mean, they are French. Uh, maybe even Spanish or whatever versions of these old stories, uh, which are better than this level of blurriness. What's really special about the new book here is that they reprinted the letters page and they, um, yeah, cover gallery, of course. And uh, the first appearance of Dan in Grimwit. But I want to show you this one here. 
This is Dan, how it looked way back then when it was printed on cheapish newspaper. Much softer. Uh, I wouldn't um, uh, prefer this version here over the one uh, that you just saw. But it's a nice different version. Um, the certain blurriness and the certain um, unfocusedness really adds up to the pulpy atmosphere of these comics that were always a, a part of the uh, Dan appeal, I think. So, yeah, that's an interesting choice to to reprint this old stuff here to pay tri uh, pay tribute to the old uh, pulpy uh, comic book books from way back then. So uh, overall, um, as it is with almost all of these publications so far, uh, some pages really amaze me. Oh, they are really a, an improvement to uh, the what I got before and some not. So um, it stays interesting, uh, I would say, the, the series by um, Dark Horse. Um, but that's all for now. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.